Hey guys, so today is, of course, Easter, um, and I, I, I've just been sort of spacing off today because it's such, the weather is absolutely wonderful, the sun is shining, the grass is green, you know, April and May are among my favorite months of the year because they're not too hot and they're, they're not too cold, it's sort of in that sweet spot within the wheel of the year that I personally love, um, but, you know, today's Easter, so as a dutiful pagan myself, I've just been sort of rereading an old book I found years ago, Venetia Newell's Folkloric Study in Egg at Easter. It's a big, beefy book all about the customs associated with the Easter egg, and it's, um, it's antiquity. Because contrary to what certain nihilistic scholars have to say about the subject, who sort of dismiss it in, in, in a zealous, um, Christian apologetic sense, such as Ronald Hudman and his work on the subject. It really does have, um, um, it, it really does reach far back into antiquity and, and many modern pagans and um, certain more extremist scholars really don't want to acknowledge that. Uh, which which is is you know, in my view detrimental. They feel that if they don't accept the most conservative position on a subject, then the craft as a whole cannot be taken seriously. And I I feel that that's uh, flawed logic. Um, <clears throat> but it, it it's been a little while since I've uh, uploaded the video, um, mostly because I I haven't. Managed to um, get much time to myself lately. I am I am caring for for my brother who is laid up in in the, uh, the living room. It is his new makeshift bedroom. Um, and um, those of you that have stopped on my channel or or who are subscribers, um, take a look at my main page and you'll see that I have updated my channel art. I have I have done something a little darker themed. But only because of my personal love for you know the horn gods of, of, of the old the old craft you know um, it was really sort of an homage to um, the film The Witch, which came out last year I think or maybe the year before um, I know I rented it last year but I'm 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 not sure uh, if it came out that year or the year before. Um, and, you know, uh, films uh, come out on, on DVD and are able to be rented so so quickly now. But when um, when I was younger, you know, you used to have to wait months, if not even a year or two, before you could rent a movie that had been playing in the theaters. And they used to play at the theaters for several weeks, and now they're only in the theaters for about a week now. So it's it's a bit of a trade off. I personally to go to see a movie at the theater when at all possible, but I'm 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 rambling on a bit. Um, today actually would have been the 71st birthday of Margot Adler, who is a famous gardener and hostess. And a lot of us in the pagan community really wanted to reserve this day in her honor, and so that's really what this video is about. Um, uh, she was really a leading leading light in the um, the the pagan community, and I really don't like to, like to use the word neo pagan, which is something that I, um, Isaac von Wolch really coined back in the eighties or nineties to um sort of impose a hard differentiation between ancient paganism and <clears throat> modern paganism, because he believed uh, that there there is no traceable lineage in any sense, tracing contemporary paganism back to ancient paganism. Um, <clears throat> uh, which is unfortunate because um, uh, Professor Ronald Hutton recently confessed in, in a more recent book that he's written that while he was writing his book, The Triumph of the Moon, he found um, and that uh, he found um, my tongue is even tied today, I swear. It must still be the Mercury retrograde. You know, the, the 
my thoughts just aren't congealing the way the way I would hope they would. But um, Professor Hutton actually confessed in his book Witches, Druids, and King Arthur that while he was writing um, Triumph of the Moon, that he found um, proof positive um, evidence tracing Wicca back to remote antiquity, but he took it upon himself in this confession to absolutely ignore it and write as though that evidence simply didn't exist, which is a tactic that he's taken with um, really all of his books, that um, he, he cherry-picks the data that he's willing to accept, and he um, seems to ignore data that is an inconvenient truth or, or proof or evidence to him, which is unfortunate. I mean, he um, <clears throat> it was in his... Um, it was in that same book, actually, uh, which is Druids and King Arthur, where he said that um, paganism throughout Europe died by a, a very early date, uh, and that it, it, it quickly became obvious, although he, he never said to whom it became obvious to. You, know, you, you would think that um, one would, would want to cite that true documentation. I mean, I would personally start that sort of documentation if I, I had it at my, at my disposal. And, um, <clears throat> um, he he um, was actually signing a blank throughout that, that entire book, um, chapter by chapter, a study by one Professor Bowersock called Hellenism and Late Antiquity, and by Hellenism, uh, Bowersock means paganism, and she was able to um, demonstrate that um, paganism throughout the throughout Europe um, was lingering. Well, it was not only lingering by the date that Hutton gave for uh, paganism's death and demise, but that it wasn't even on the wane yet in many, many districts. And so Hutton just absolutely ignored that chapter. And it was the first chapter of the entire book of, of Bowersock's study, which is, is unfortunate. But um, again, I'm, I'm digressing. A bit. I'm getting off on a, on a bit of a tangent, which is what I, I have a habit, habit of doing. Uh, but... I say as I kill myself slowly with Mountain Dew. I want to talk about Margot Atmar and her book, The Triumph, or um, Drawing Down the Moon. This is actually the very first book I ever read on on the craft. Uh, well, not not the craft per se, but of, um, of paganism in general. Um, because as I've said before. Harry Hamlin made me pagan. I, I, I blame it on him. But, you know, who, who couldn't... Who couldn't be drawn into Harry Hamlin? I mean, for God's sakes, it was the 80s and everyone had a crush on him. Um, you know, for God's sakes, he was, in, he was in the movie Making Love, which I've never seen yet, but I hear pretty good things. Um, yeah, this was the very first book I ever read on on um, Mark Bacon's, and this is actually my copy. Uh, uh, when I read it, it was actually at the um, Stewart Public Library uh, where I I live and I went to school in. Um, God, I was either in late uh, late junior high or <clears throat> probably a freshman in high school. I think when when I first read it. And you know, I I loved it, and it was it was fascinating because I realized that there are more people out there who believe what I believe because I was extremely interested in Greek mythology, and the gods of Greece seemed far more real to me than anything else that I had read or, or experienced at the time. <clears throat> um, and you know. This book is really her thumbprint. Her, her one of her legacies on the contemporary pagan community, and um, back later on, I actually plan to uh, light this candle, um, sort of as a token spell, if you will, that um, 
we will all carry her legacy in our hearts and and carry that legacy forward in our own way. Um, I, I'm not actually letting it right now because I, I simply don't have anything nearby to let it with. Um, so I will wait until after I'm, I, I'm finished filming this to actually set it alight. But um, um, in uh, in my the way in which I really choose to honor her and and the craft um, in general is through my 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 own diligent research and um, academic research in into a variety of fields that personally interest me. One of which is of course her lore and really um, um, trying to get my fellow pagan brothers and sisters not to so much reach my conclusions, because I could care less if they believe what I believe, but to give them tools to um, draw their own conclusions on a subject or a matter. <clears throat> uh, for example, I, I personally draw a, a staunch um, uh, difference between uh, medicinal herbal astrology and magical herbal astrology. Um, but I, I, I am also extremely interested in the subject of, um, of witchcraft studies and its origins, as well as Indo-European studies, and I am even um, attempting to prove a, a thesis that I have developed uh, with regard to Indo-European studies and the Agrarian calendar. Um, I must say, though, that I, I much prefer the first edition of this book for uh, for a few really superficial reasons. Um, the first being some of the more salacious photos were actually um, omitted from the second edition. Um, you know, such as... Well, I, I won't really show it because I could get in trouble from YouTube for showing it. But yeah, it's it's where I believe um, it, it. I believe it actually does um, picture um, Marco drawing on me. Um, but the other reason I I really um, was somewhat troubled by it is that she seems to have this bowing and scraping reverence whenever she mentions the work of Professor Rob Hardy. And that has really bothered me because in his earlier polemic, uh, The Pagan Religions of the Ancient British Isles, he, he really, really censors and, and castigates um, Adler by saying, and I quote, she took some fleeting notice of Norman Cohn's attack upon the Murray thesis, but only to dismiss, to dismiss it with a few general and quite inadequate remarks, ignoring the vast bulk of a detailed, meticulous, and formidable work. Um, you know, that really troubled me for a very long time, <clears throat> because anyone who's actually read um, Adler's, Adler's study drawing down the moon um, knows that her her remarks were anything but bleeding, but they were in fact a, a synthesis of his of, of Norman Cohn's views on the subject. Um, uh, Norman Cohn, um, or actually um, Ronald Hutton, rather, um, to my knowledge, never apologized to um, Margot Adler for having, in, in in essence, sort of vilified her early on in his career. I was actually puzzled by her sort of um, reverence towards him, so I actually took it upon myself to write her one day, and she in fact responded to me several months later, which I w I was surprised to find in um, in my Facebook messages, and she quite simply said that she had never heard nor read um, Ronald Hunt's book, Pagan Religions of the Ancient British Isles. Um, I do believe her. Um, Especially since she had, well, after she she had written *Drawing the Moon*, and I'll um, I'll um, um, link to this this source when I um, in uh, in the the 
comments below. But um, um, after she wrote Drawing the Moon, she sort of um, she sort of left the study of the pagan world in a sense and sort of got on with her day to day life and and didn't really um, catch the earlier influences that were having an, an impact on our community until she got back to um, working on the revision in the, oh, I think about 2007. Um, so I, I really do believe her when she said that she ha hasn't even uh, read that book. Um, but um, I would actually um, charge that Margot does ex precisely what a journalist does, which is to break down and synthesize an argument that's someone's trying to make. And, and she does, the, does so with remarkable success. I mean, she spends a good five pages on uh, uh, detailing Norman Cohen's thesis. And it's really apparent to me that Cohen's um, views have really had a lasting impact on those uh, Professor Hutton, um, such as um, uh, Cohen's view that uh, that the topic of witches has been repeatedly reinterpreted in light of the intellectual preoccupations of the moment, which is, in a sense, saying that, you know, you can't really believe anything in the rights on the subject because it is therefore innately biased by what is going on in the in the culture at the time that it's being written. And Hutton's really, um, um, he's really, um, played that same trick also in his own writings by really saying that, you know, um, my opinion is really the only valid one that, um, that um, anyone who really will, um, uh, that he, he, he implies rather strongly that um, there isn't any research that will prove other, otherwise or, or convince him otherwise. And that, um, and that if anyone does find find some, they, they should be very suspicious of it. He really strongly implies that others that his readers should be sus suspicious of research that um, does not corroborate his own. Um, she goes on to accuse Cohen of ageism, which he does do quite often. Um, he used a, um, well, the irony of Cohen's study is that he um, disregards all accounts of witchcraft as being a, well, his book is really a history of, a, of to him, what, what is to him a delusion. Um, and he um, then goes on to actually use use a, um, a, a very psychoanalytical model with which to explain it, which is extremely unusual because in, in a sense that is just as illusory as, as um, uh, what he feels um, uh, the concept of witches are. And it was really, um, it was really modern witch covens emerging on the scene that really um, convinced Cohen to write his book because he was so offended by the work of Margaret Murray, even going so far as to intentionally misrepresent her views. Um, when this was brought to Ronald Hatton's attention by the work of freelance journalist um, Jeanine Farrell Roberts, um, he ab uh, had an absolutely refused to accept that, that, that Cohen had done anything improper, which is unfortunate, really. Um, it was the the um, debate actually took place in a British journal called, called The Culture, which is no longer in print, unfortunately. The editor, uh, Michael Howard, passed away uh, a few years ago, I believe. <clears throat> But it was it was like squeezing blood from a stone to get to even 
not casually admit that Kuhn may have been a just Murray uh, with that qualifying statement. Um, even though if you compare what Murray wrote with um, Kuhn's analysis and allegations of her, you can clearly see that he's intentionally misrepresenting her work. In fact, uh, Norman Cohn tried to destroy Carla Ginsburg's credibility by doing exactly to him what he did to Murray. Um, Carla Ginsburg actually um, goes on at length about that in the in the preface to the English translation of his book. Um, oh, I'm spacing on the English title right now, but it's um, it's it's about the um the the, the Benedicto. The, um, the Dugers of um, uh, of an entire uh, uh, immediate Italian sect, but um, uh, that uh, the psychoanalytical blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the psychoanalytical position that um, Cohn um, began using has really had a, a lasting influence on British scholars of witchcraft studies, such as um, Robin Briggs, who in a rather excessive polemic. Uh, he, he wrote this in um in a a, a collection of, of articles that other scholars of witchcraft had had contributed to. Um, it was it was about some trials in in Rain, France, which is a district in north north eastern France, I believe. Um, anyway, um, he essentially dismisses. All accounts of witchcraft as has as having a a psychoanalytical origin story. Um, for example, he totally dismisses, without any proof whatsoever, um, that, um, for example, um, um, accounts of flying ointment, for example, were um, um, simply examples of the people being sexually and psychologically psychologically repressed the flying weapon has nothing to do with um with flying at all but ha but has instead to do with wanting masturbatory masturbatory release yeah masturbatory release and if his work is all you read on subjects of course it, it makes sense however <clears throat> We have accounts uh, from the medieval period of pots of flying women actually being found and tested by a physician of the time who, who um, had found their, uh, their patients, one of which was a physician's wife who just fell over in a delirious stupor and had a visionary experience. So that's, that's a bit of BS to me. But... Uh, See, I'm just gonna mention some other things. Um, <laughs> yeah, in fact, Murray uh, never believed the nocturnal flights were real, uh, but she believed they were shamanic visions reported by other religious cultures of the world. Um, even though Cohn was clearly misrepresenting her as as um intentionally giving false information in her books, um, which is, is completely fabricated. Yeah, she she never deliberately mis misrepresented her readers. Um, that is, is really just a, um, an invention by Cohn himself, who has had just a, a lasting influence on scholars to this day, which is really unfortunate. Um, but, um, um, Margaret, or, um, not Margaret, um, Margaret Adler actually had another impact on the contemporary pagan community, and that is through a tarot deck that is called Tarot of the Old Path. And it is written or, or created in collaboration with eight witches 
she being the only American witch. Um, the others, um, many of whom you know, are um, uh, Lois Bourne, Patricia Crafter, and Janet Stewart Farrar, as well as three whom I have I've never personally heard of. Um, Aislinn Lester, Pauline Newberry, and Kim Tracy. Um, actually, the, 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 the companion book to this deck is really worth getting if, you, if you've never got it. Uh, it. It's actually not published with the deck itself. I actually had to buy it separately. It's been out of print for many, many years. Um, actually, it's been out of print since 95. I was a junior high school when it went out of print. Um, but yeah, um, it's 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 my primary working deck. Um, it actually has a very uh, vernal or spring-like energy. Um, the um, each of the um, the witches uh, were, um, who were collaborating with the artist to create this deck really had an influence over the. Um, the major arcana, um, for the most part, but Marco's contribution to this deck, if I can find it, is the suit of cauldrons. She advised the artist to create to change the suit of cups to cauldrons instead. And um, it's it's not mentioned in the guy in, in the companion book, but can you see the um, the face and the rock formation behind it? It actually looks as looks as though it's taking a um, a drink from the cauldron from the um, as though it's taking into itself the the mysteries of, of the goddess of of the the spiritual waters that it contains. Um, uh, Otherwise, this is really a a right away clone, and um, in, a, in a future video, I do plan on totally reviewing the whole deck. Um, but th this video is getting quite long as it is, so I will leave that for another time. And I wish you well, and I hope you do great. Um, uh, and all I can say is, you know, um, strive to really carry Margaret's legacy into the future and to encourage um, those that come after us to do the same because the craft will, will really benefit from it. So until next time, you know, keep calm and witch on and, you know, just be all sorts of awesome, you know. Um, I will just be here hanging out, just laying in the grass and just loving this amazing weather. So I'll see you again.